Um, and so this also leads us to this more general distinction again, like I mentioned before, between pleasure and long lasting happiness. Um, pleasure would be something like eating ice cream, uh, listening to music, sitting on the sofa, watching a movie. And, and lasting happiness would be um, happiness that is based on this idea of flourishing or accomplishment or doing something meaningful, right? And, and these are different. Uh, and this is a split in the whole philosophy of happiness between the one side that says that, you know, happiness uh, is essentially based on pleasure. And this is called hedonism. This is a philosophical uh, theory called hedonism. Uh, literally, you know, happiness is nothing but pleasure. So um, if I'm a hedonist, I would say, you know, pleasure is all I need. Uh, if I have pleasure, then I'm happy. If I have a series of pleasures, an unbroken life of pleasure, then I'm happy enough. While um, um, this, this would be hedonism, right? While the other side would say, you know, pleasures are empty and a life eating ice cream only uh, is not going to be a happy life um, and therefore I need something more, something to give my life meaning. And, and on the other side you have Aristotle, uh, classically um, mentioned there, who Aristotle said that, you know, our happiness also depends on us being moral and being members of a community and being recognized and having a good life in, in respects that are much more than just the consumption of pleasures. And you can also see this in utilitarianism uh, is a theory of ethics, which is based on the idea of maximizing happiness. And, and there already you have two different uh, proponents. You have Bentham, Jeremy Bentham, who uh, said that every kind of happiness is the same. So playing a game is the same as, you know, reading poetry. Um, and if somebody has a number of happiness points from reading poetry, then this is equally good to the same number of happiness points from playing a game. But then this has a problem, right? Because if you say it's only the amount of happiness that counts, then you could in principle say, okay, let's measure all the happinesses in terms of chocolate cookies, right? The chocolate cookie, let's say, is one unit, one, one head on it's often called, right? One unit of happiness. And now everything can be counted in chocolate cookies. So obviously one chocolate cookie is one chocolate cookie. Um, a, a nice meal in a restaurant is perhaps five chocolate cookies. I, I use the chocolate cookies now like a currency, right? Like a currency of happiness, um, units of happiness that I can calculate. And then I would say my graduation from university is perhaps a thousand chocolate cookies, a thousand units of happiness. And marrying my wife is 2,000 units of happiness. So if this is the case, then we run into a problem because now you could say, okay, then let me kill your wife and give you 2,000 chocolate cookies. Or let me take your graduation diploma away, burn it and give you 1,000 units of, of happiness in, term, in, in, way in chocolate cookies, right? I give you 1,000 chocolate cookies. Is this okay now? Are you happy? And then you would say, no, it's not the same. Right, it's my wife is not two thousand chocolate cookies. It's something different. It's not only something more. It's not even ten thousand or a million chocolate cookies. It's something entirely different. <clears throat> and this is what Mill said. Mill said, John Stuart Mill, we must distinguish between different types of happiness, and they are different in quality, not only in quantity, not only in amount. And again, this is the the main split in utilitarianism and this is also one of the main splits in the philosophy of happiness are we going to count only the amount of happiness like a hedonist would do or are we going to also distinguish different types of happiness and if we distinguish different types how do we weigh them against each other so now if i cannot compare my wife with chocolate cookies then how can i ever compare two different types of happiness what is more important marrying or graduating or watching 500 good movies or having a good job. And it's not done with saying, I don't know, because if you don't know, if you really said you don't know, then you would never be able to make a rational decision in your life. So you say, should I marry or should I graduate first? This question wouldn't make any sense if you couldn't compare. So in the end, we, we are comparing. We feel that we can compare what is more important, but how do we do it if we don't believe in this commensurability of pleasures, 
that we can exchange one pleasure with the other. So th these are all difficult to understand processes there, right? And we need to think about them. We need to know uh, a little more about how these things work.